Now the next thing is, write down optical isomerism. We can't do much today, we don't have that much time, but we'll start, see the basics, like what is optical activity and optical isomerism. Heading right down. Optical isomerism. Optical isomerism is actually the behavior of a compound. The behavior of a compound. of a compound towards towards the plane polarized light it is called ppl in short plane polarized light So all those compounds, compounds having having similar physical and physical and chemical properties. but differs only in the behavior behavior towards plain polarized light called optical isomers and this phenomenon is is optical isomerism Done, copied. Yeah, guys. Nice. Okay, so what happens in this? Suppose you have a compound given and you need to find out the optical behavior of this compound. Okay, any organic compound we have. Optical behavior means optical activity you need to find out. What you will do, you will take plain polarized light Plane polarized light are the light which is along the same plane like this. 
and you allow this plane polarized light to pass through this organic compound. The light which comes out, if it rotates in any direction, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, if there is rotation, no matter in what direction, if we observe this rotation, then the compound is said to be optically active compound. Clear? Okay. Yes, I'll repeat. First of all, what is PPL and what happens in this? We'll discuss uh, all these things, but this is the, uh, you know, this is the working we need to do. Is it clear the working? Yes. Suppose I'll give you the plane polarized light. Then what you need to do to find out whether the compound is optically active or not with this PPL, you know that, correct? Understood? So obviously this method uh, is not gonna help because it is a laboratory method we have, right? We perform all these experiment in a, in a lab, right? So exam may, you won't get this, this, you know, this concept won't help you finding what compound, given compound is optically active or not. So you must have some alternate way, which is more important actually. So what is the alternate way? We'll discuss that obviously in the next class, not today. But today we'll understand what is this PPL and what happens over here, right? See, first of all, the you know the whole idea is based on whether the plane polarized light rotates or not. Correct? Yes or no? Right? If there is no rotation, then the compound is said to be optically inactive. Okay. Why we need plane polarized light? Because if you take a light source, this light source radiates lights in all direction, isn't it? Any light source we have, it radiates lights in all direction. See, so if we allow this light directly to pass through this organic compound, right? Since it is there in all direction, then how do we get to know that the light has been rotated or not? Are you getting me? What I'm trying to tell you? Since it is plane polarized, since it is polarized along a single plane, so if any rotation we observe, if we find that this light is not along the plane it was earlier, we, we can say there is some rotation in the light and hence the compound is optically active. But when the light is in all direction, then we cannot say this, whether the rotation has been placed or not, right? Yes, the concept, you got it. Yes, so that is why we are using PPL here, plain polarized light, in order to uh, you know, find out that, that yes, the rotation has been done and hence the compound is optically active or not. Now, what is PPL then? And how do we get it? So actually what happens, this entire thing is done in a device called polarimeter. Need me a question? Like the experiment in which device it takes place. The device name is polarimeter. Polarimeter is a device in which we have all the arrangement, right? And there's a place in which we can, you know, insert the compound which we need to find out and then we can allow the light to pass through from one end and in that polarimeter we have a prism this is called nicole prism bowl there so actually what happens i'll tell you what happens in within this polarimeter we have a in like you know inlet where the light will strike okay so suppose this is the light source we have which obviously radiates lights in all direction but this won't help you help us because we need to find out whether there is any rotation or not. 
so we need to convert this into along the same along one single plane so to for this purpose this is the source of light so in polarity meter there's a nikol prism placed between the you know object organic compound and the light source before going into going through the organic compound it has to pass through a nikol prism right this is the nikol prism now in this nikol prism what happens we have ultra fine slits nikol prism it contains ultra fine slits so what happens in this you must have a uh, sin the window like jisme bar lage hote hain like you uh, movies mein ya kahin dekha hoga kabhi ghar pe like something like this i tell you suppose is the window we have and in this window there are uh, you know metal bar is placed like this ghar mein window mein we used to have this isn't it yes have you seen this kind of window jail right jail why you got this exam yes jail kind of thing correct so similar thing we have here in nikol prism also but that is very fine ultra fine slit we are calling it as so when the light is strikes at this nikol prism all those lights which are parallel to the slits passes through other lights will collide and reflect back correct understood right so for example suppose we have the slit uh, like this we have the slit here in this uh, nikol prism just to make you understand i'm just drawing it thicker like this suppose we have a nikol prism this is the slit we have so two light ray i am considering here one is suppose this one which is parallel to the slit that we have in the uh, prism and other one is suppose which is not parallel any direction you can take i am taking in this direction so obvious this light will collide here and reflect back the horizontal one but only those lights which are parallel to this slit like this the uh we can say this is the uh purple one will come out like this and finally on the other side of the nikol prism we get light which is parallel to each other like this isn't it did you understand so in this what happens all those lights which are parallel to this slit that will only you know passes through the nikol prism so obviously on the other side we get what we get the light which are polarized along a plane actually so this we call it as ppl is it clear yes or no you can type in clear now this light which is plane polarized we allow this to pass through the organic compound which we need to find out whether it is optically active or not so this is the organic compound it passes through this and the other side if we observe some deflection in the light then it is said to be optically active otherwise it is optically inactive this happens under in a device called polarity meter i hope this is clear to all of you yes you can type in y if you understood and if you do not if you want to me to repeat please let me know respond quickly guys all of you right so this is one thing obviously this method is you know is a concept that you should know 
uh, in the exam if they ask you tell me this whether this compound is optically active or not obviously this method won't help you because you don't have polarimeter you don't have all these things you cannot perform the experiment in the examination hall so we have the alternate way by which we can find out whether the given compound is optically active or not but few experimental facts we have here that you should know what is that first thing if the light rotates clockwise if the light rotates clockwise the compound is said to be dextro rotatory dextro rotatory in short we also write it as d or simply positive sign positive sign means dextro rotatory clockwise rotation if the light rotates anti clockwise anti clockwise it is levo rotatory levo rotatory l l or negative so this d and l is the experimental thing we cannot find out this theoretically suppose if you ask me this compound ch3choh d this compound whether it is dextro or levo i can't answer this right to answer this whether it is dextro or levo we have to perform this experiment theoretically we can answer whether this compound is optically active or not but this we can't answer this is the experiment if you want to find out dextro or levo you have only two option one is take the help of the book in which this data is given other one is take this object take this molecule go to the lab perform the experiment look at this what deviation you have clockwise or anti clockwise then only you can say this right so dextro and levo in general they won't ask in the exam if they ask there will be some information so that we can find out what is happening actually okay but theoretically we cannot find out whether the given compound is dextro rotatory or levo rotatory is it clear to all of you yes yeah done okay so this is one part of it like the theoretical thing the experiment what we'll do in the lab right this is one part of it like i said we must have some theoretical way by which we can find out the optical you know behavior of a compound whether it is optically active or inactive theoretical way we have correct but before moving into the theoretical way we must understand some terms right some terms we must understand acha let it be i can't start this now otherwise i have to again start it from here uh see guys fine um, the terms we have just write down the heading we'll start with next class chiral center what is chiral center and what all other terms we have we'll start from this next class we don't have time otherwise i have to repeat again from here okay so we won't proceed from this now yeah you can copy this down this write down this heading and just let it be we'll start from here in the next class yeah so next class we'll finish this chapter okay uh you can uh, i'll share the assignment also that you can solve okay and then we'll start the last chapter of grade 11 obviously p block we have p block you must go through on your own because i'll finish in one class okay quickly we'll go okay so we'll see this next class chiral center and all 
I will share the assignment. You can attempt that. Okay, geometrical isomerism. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Bye bye.